New update. AITA for not telling my father and stepmother about my son's birth? I am not oop. Oop is you, terway new mom. Originally posted to R, am I the asshole? Previous bo are you. New update. AITA for not telling my father and stepmother about my son's birth? New update marked with. Trigger warnings. Emotional abuse. Verbal abuse. Possible parental alienation. Infantilizing behaviors. Less than. Recap. Original post November 7, 2023. My. 26F. Father. 59M. Has been dating, Paula. 38F. For four years. I never got to know her well. As I was about to move out when we met. My sister. 20F. Still lives between our parents and likes Paula. But finds her annoying. Paula has an odd attitude towards pregnancy. It became the most obvious when my cousin announced she was expecting back in 2021. Her daughter would be the first great-grandchild. We hadn't been sure my grandma would be around for that. And after an emotional announcement in which everyone was overjoyed, Paula commented that she felt it wasn't a big deal, and didn't get what all the fuss was about. She kept that stance for all nine months. But once the baby was born, Paula suddenly became a bit too interested in her, which my cousin was clearly uncomfortable with. My husband, 28M, and I announced our pregnancy earlier this year. At first, my father was over the moon. Since this is his first grandchild, I believed that would last. But as I heard from my sister, Paula was just as condescending as we expected, if not more. Whenever I announced anything about my pregnancy or baby, sex, first kicks, ultrasound pictures, etc., Paula always reacted with one of three phrases. Okay, that's not that big a deal. Or, is that all she talks about these days? Quote dot. I didn't care about it at first but after a few weeks. I started to notice my father was also losing any interest he had in my pregnancy. As the months went by, he became increasingly detached and standoffish. He started to either ignore or not pay attention to most of the updates I made on my baby. He also didn't come to our name reveal. We did that instead of a gender reveal. It was literally just a lunch party with a game we made up. Or the baby shower because. And I quote, Paula doesn't think it's worth it. My son was born on Halloween. And I decided not to tell my father and Paula. After almost nine months of excuses and disinterest. I didn't see any reason to. I was in the hospital for four days. During which only mine and my husband's closest friends and family visited us. The day before we left. I posted a picture of my son on Instagram. And that's when my father found out. He called to ask why I hadn't told him and Paula or invited them to meet my baby. I didn't lie. They didn't make any efforts to get involved, both emotionally and physically, during my pregnancy, so they'd have to wait for baby news like everybody else. My father and Paula are furious, accusing me of using my son as a pawn and keeping them away out of pettiness. They're saying I'm holding the fact that they missed a few dumb parties against them. My husband and pretty much my whole family agrees with me. My sister, while mostly on my side, still thinks I should have told my father. Since this is his first grandchild and he had to find out he was born through social media, she thinks this is all Paula's fault and I should apologize to our dad. AITA? Verdict. Not enough information. Relevant comments. Realistic site 3952, in ta but I think you need to have a conversation with your dad. You need to let him know he will inevitably miss out on a lot more if he continues to mirror. Paula's indifference in shared family milestones. It is not everyone else's responsibility to compensate. If he intends to have a relationship with his grandchildren, and also have relationships with with other relatives. He needs to be willing to do his part as well and express interest and participate.
And no, it isn't about showing up to parties. It is about making the effort to be included when you are invited to be and not dismiss those invitations as if they are meaningless. Ah, I'm trying to make that clear to them. My father missed my graduation. Not coming to my baby shower doesn't bother me that much. It's the condescending attitude and lack of interest they have both been displaying my entire pregnancy that made me decide not to tell them. Substantial Youth 9106, NTA. All of the Esh replies are dumb as hell. Paula has your dad twirled around her finger. The only two in-person baby events that you had. They didn't show up. And your dad was standoffish for the majority of your pregnancy due to Paula. He is a ground-ass man. He doesn't get to all of a sudden meet and be involved in his first grandchild's life when he barely cared before. Guaranteed he only wanted to come to the hospital for photos and to post on social media and show off. Apologizing to your dad will not do anything, but only enable his BS. He needs to step up put his foot down to Paula, and show you that he genuinely and actively wants to be a part of your immediate family's life. Your dad can be updated via social media until he gets his face out of his behind and acts like an actual father. Ah, my father is against posting pictures of children on social media, but he's definitely the type of person to try to show off in real life. That being said, I do believe he genuinely wanted to meet my son at the hospital. Portion of Sunshine. Honestly the naming party I can see being like a, well that's a little dumb, kind of like gender. Reveal parties. But to miss the baby shower my god. To ignore the part where you celebrate the parents and upcoming baby. Give baby supplies so the parents don't get overloaded with prep costs and even just spend time with your daughter knowing she'll have her hands full for at least the next year. Man needs to get his head out of his ass. Ah, calling the name reveal a party was probably an exaggeration on my part. It was a small lunch with a clue-style game my husband and I created. I talked to my sister about it, and we both think that had I not told my father the lunch was baby-related, he and Paula might have come, an NBSP. Additional information November 28, 2023. My AITA post from a few weeks ago was voted, not enough info. Which seems fair. I tried to reply to whatever comments I could. But I don't think everyone reads those. So I'm writing this to reply to the most common questions that were asked in my original post as well as to clarify some things that might have been misunderstood. Some of these are literally copy-pasted from my comments. By the way, does Paula have, want, like kids? She doesn't have children. And from what I gather, she doesn't want to. I know for an absolute fact that my father doesn't want more kids. She has also never been pregnant. She has mentioned that to my sister on some occasions. Paula does. However, like kids, especially babies, she was all over my cousin's daughter once she was born. And I have no doubt she'd do the same with my son. It's pregnancy, and the events that surround it, that she seems to have a problem with. The age gap between my father and Paula. Paula is actually on the older side none of the many. Women my father has been with since divorcing my mom have been older than 35 by the time they broke up. I'm genuinely surprised they're still dating, as his relationships don't tend to last more than a couple years. And yes, I do realize that none of these things are good. As much as I'm bothered by it, it's not my place to say anything. Especially now that I don't live with my father anymore. As long as they're both consenting adults. There's not much I can do or say about it. And that's fine. Why does my sister find Paula annoying? According to my sister, Paula's most annoying habits include frequently speaking in a baby voice. Mostly around my father. Interrupting other people while they're talking and criticizing random women on the street. Behind their backs. 
I don't know Paula well enough to be sure how valid these claims are. But I have witnessed a bit of those first two habits during previous visits. The baby voice annoys me too. To be honest she sometimes sounds like the four-year-olds I used to babysit. But again, it's not my place to complain. Paula's behavior once my cousin's daughter was born. Paula would ask for more pictures of the baby than both me and my sister were getting. Even though she barely knew my cousin, she made many comments about how she looked nothing like my cousin's husband. She tried to get my cousin's daughter to say her name when she was five months old. Paula isn't her real name. Her actual name is longer and harder to pronounce. And every single picture Paula ever took with the baby was turned into an Instagram post. Most times without my cousin's approval. Whenever we visited, Paula asked to hold my cousin's daughter all the time. And hesitated to give her to anyone else. Last Christmas, she wanted my cousin to open her gift for the baby first. And got annoyed that an actual infant wasn't as excited about it as she was. She has also made a few comments about how my cousin still hasn't bounced back and has spoken ill of my cousin's husband behind his back. What updates did I make about my pregnancy? Some people in the comments seem to mistake updates for social media posts. So I want to stress that I barely posted about my pregnancy on social media. I made maybe two posts while pregnant and another one to announce my son's birth. Those were only on Instagram. I hate TikTok. And my account is private. Many of my co-workers didn't even know I was pregnant until I showed up one day with snug clothing. And a seven-month bump. A few of them didn't find out until I went on maternity leave. I do a large part of my work sitting down. The updates I'm referring to were made only to my family and close friends. They were mostly about mine and my son's health. And all of them were made either in person or by text, phone call. Most of the updates I made to my father were through text. Since I work and don't see him in person that much. Also, my father and I have had problems in the past over me, not telling him anything. And my relatively new habit of updating him on what has been going on in my life is an effort to remedy that. Seriously, I get where people were coming from. But I find it concerning that we live in a time where someone can't mention updates about their pregnancy without people assuming they're talking about social media. Did I talk to my father about his or Paula's behavior? Yes, several times. He said he'd try to be more involved, but never made any attempt to do so. He either didn't remember our conversations or genuinely didn't care. I'm fine with Paula not being interested in my pregnancy or the two events I invited her and my father to. We don't know each other that well. What I'm not fine with is her rudeness whenever I shared any information with my family. As well as the fact that my dad let himself be dragged down by her behavior. How many events did I invite them to during my pregnancy? Literally the only two I mentioned. The name reveal lunch and the baby shower. Why name reveal? Me and my husband hate gender reveals. But we still wanted a small, light-hearted affair with close friends and family. And calling it a party was an exaggeration on my part. It was a small lunch with a clue-style game my husband and I created. I talked to my sister about it. And we both think that had I not told my father the lunch was baby related. He and Paula might have come. Off topic. I'm pretty proud of that game. So here's a small description of what we did. Feel free to skip this. We pretty much made a custom clue board game. Rather than guessing the suspect. Weapon and murder location. The goal was to guess the name. There were six options. The first stuffed animal we'd gotten him. Also six options. And a random room in our apartment. Nine options. And we mostly kept that part just to make things harder for the players. We used a template of the clue board as a base and added mini versions of the rooms in our apartment. 
We got miniature animals to stand in for the weapons. And we also made the cards from scratch. I work with animation and my husband briefly studied graphic design. We had some help from my architect friend and two other friends who got design degrees. It was a little over the top. But we had a lot of fun doing it. It was basically a collective passion project. Not everyone cares about your pregnancy. Having a baby is a normal thing. You're not the main character of everyone's life. At no point did I express any of that. Nor did I expect to be treated like Demeter. I am perfectly aware that pregnancy is not an unusual experience. And I'm not special just because I had a baby. Most of the time, I actually hate being the center of attention. I updated my family about my pregnancy because my son is their family too. And my friends because they asked and worried about me. I never expected any special treatment from any of them. But I do expect to be treated with respect. Or at the very least politely. You shouldn't cut your dad and his girlfriend out of your son's life just because he didn't care. About your pregnancy. Again. I never said I would. All I did was not tell them my son was born. I made it clear that they were free to come meet him once we brought him home. And this isn't about them not showing up to parties or not caring about my pregnancy as much as I did. My father missed my graduation. Not coming to my baby shower doesn't bother me that much. It's the condescending attitude and lack of interest that both my dad and Paula have been displaying my entire pregnancy that made me decide not to tell them. Did my father know my due date? I told him about it several times. My son was born the day after my due date. At no point did he try to reach out before or during my hospital stay. My best guess is that he forgot about it. Who did come to visit us in the hospital? My mom, my stepdad, my sister, my maternal aunt and two cousins. Mother-in-law, brother-in-law and a few of our closest friends. Overall, about 15 people came to meet our son during our four-day hospital stay. My mother, sister, brother-in-law and two of my best friends, including my baby's godmother, were the only people who came more than once. I also want to add that besides those people, the only ones who found out about my son's birth prior to my post on Instagram were the ones who asked. My father and Paula were not among those people. I think that's all I wanted to clarify. I do also have an update. I'll try to post it soon, an NBSP. Update November 29, 2023. Because my AITA post was voted, not enough info. I posted on my page some additional information and replies to the most common questions I was asked. That being said, most of the comments helped me understand that I did the right thing. Maybe I was the AH. But I had the right to be one. My final conclusion was, be rude to me through a hard time in my life? Fine. Have fun in the peanut gallery. I decided that I wasn't exactly comfortable with the idea of Paula holding and cooing over my newborn after almost nine months of rudeness and lack of acknowledgement. So I told my father that while he was free to come to my apartment and meet his grandson for the first time, I didn't want Paula to tag along. My intentions weren't to ban her forever, but rather to just wait a month or two, or, in a perfect world, until she apologized. We had a small fight over it, but my dad agreed and came to meet him without Paula. He visited us a couple more times that week. During these visits, he was cold and short with me and my husband, and I ended up being cold in return. This was, admittedly, not my proudest moment, but I was too tired and angry to care at the time. A little under two weeks ago, my paternal aunt and two cousins, including the one I mentioned in my previous post, came from out of state. My cousins stayed at my apartment, while my aunt stayed at my father's. During her stay, my aunt caught several instances of Paula openly badmouthing me in my unfair treatment of her. 
but didn't comment on it at first and then. The day before she left, she watched my father not only agree with Paula, but call me childish and ungrateful as well. Like most of my family, my aunt knew the whole story. She told them both off for how they treated me during my pregnancy. My sister was there, and eventually joined in. The result was, apparently, a huge fight between all four of them. Eventually, my sister started crying. She drove to my place and told me everything before falling asleep on my couch. My father called me and we fought. It lasted about 40 minutes. And after countless attempts on his part to play the, but I'm your father, card. I managed to make it clear that I owed Paula nothing. Least of all my time and attention. The next day, my aunt came over for lunch. She told us that after our argument, there was another massive fight, this time between my dad and Paula. She didn't pick up on specific words, only screaming. A few days later, my dad called me again. He apologized and promised to try to be more involved. I'm not sure how sincere he was. I accepted the apology, but told him he's on thin ice. I will help him be a part of our lives, but I refuse to be the only one making that effort. It's not my job to try to engage him in things he shows no interest in. And if he doesn't get invested in something, he can't expect to be treated the same as the people who do. My sister went back to his place a few days later. Paula wasn't there. Apparently, she's staying with her mother for a while. Neither of us know anything else about that. If this turns out to be an actual breakup, my father will probably wait a while to confirm it. I never wished ill on her, but I'd be lying if I said I had faith in their relationship. Or any of my father's. For that matter, countless fights and a cluster feeding newborn later. I'm exhausted. I'm glad this is over. My relationship with my father is still very strained, and I'm not particularly proud of how things turned out. But my main focus now is my son and it warms my soul to witness how loved he already is. From the bottom of my heart, thank you all, an NBSP. Hash new update, final update January 21st, 2024. Hey, guys, it's been almost two months since my last post, so I thought I'd give you one more update. Paula did end up coming back. She returned to my father's place about a week after my previous post. I didn't see either of them in the first few weeks of December. But my sister did. She said that Paula was constantly cold with her. But things seemed normal between her and our father. Neither of them talked about me. My son or their fight. My sister talked to my father about my son a few times. And Paula never made any comments. The most she did was make a slight joke about my son having an old guy name. His name is Gabriel, so the joke fell flat. The issue came around Christmas time. We usually spend it with my aunt. But since she lives out of state and I wasn't comfortable traveling with my baby, I invited my sister, father, Mill and Bill to my place. My mom and stepdad were out of town to celebrate my son's first Christmas. Paula was invited too, but for some reason she didn't want to come. Instead, she tried to convince my father to travel with her. He refused, and they started fighting again. Eventually, the events surrounding my pregnancy were brought up, and the fights got worse. They officially broke up on December 22nd, right in front of my younger sister. Paula moved in with her mother again. Meanwhile, my relationship with my father has been improving. We're still not perfect, and there are things he's said that I can't forgive, but I'm glad I'm giving him this chance. To my surprise, he's also turning out to be a pretty good grandfather. Also I showed my sister these posts, and she apologized for telling me to apologize to our dad. I was never really mad at her for that. I'm still getting DMs about how, not everyone cares about my pregnancy, and such. If you think that's what this is about, you haven't read my posts. 
Even if that was what I had a problem with, I don't understand how it could be entitled of me to expect my father to care. And to address the messages I got about my four-day hospital stay. Thank you for your concern. I was in labor for 22 hours and had a couple minor complications. Both me and my son were fine, but they wanted to keep us under observation for a while longer. I'm pretty sure this is over. Even if it's not, this will be my final update, and I'm not sure I'll reply to comments. I'm done thinking about this. My son will be three months old in 10 days. He smiled for the first time today. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Thank you all. Happy 2024. And NBSP. Hash this is a repost sub IAM not oop. Hash editors note. Please remember the no brigading rule. Do not harass oops. Do not comment on the posts linked in Boris. This is a very serious problem on the BORU sub. Doing so will result into a permanent ban from this sub and the other link sub. S. Again. Please do not harass oops. This reeks of jealousy. Paula needs help and to stay far away from kids until she gets it. To those who DM that not everyone cares about. Your. Pregnancy. Message. Are just as weird as Paula. Seriously. Those people need to get a life. I got the strong impression that while OP's dad didn't want to post pictures to Instagram. That Paula sure did. She farmed OP's cousin's photos for Instagram and tried to do the same with OP. I'd bet money that the real reason she was pissed is because she didn't get the cute, holding the baby in the hospital, Instagram pics. What is with all the people telling her, not everyone cares about your pregnancy? If my dad didn't care about my pregnancy and didn't get involved, I'd be furious and would not feel bad for leaving him out. It's her dad, JFC. Paula needs some mental health help. She never had a kid. Talks like a baby and wants a baby to focus on her gift. She wants to be the main character. A relationship goes two ways. The father could have texted his daughter too about his grandson. Oop head was probably a mess after the long birth plus she had a lot of visitors. He knew her due date so he could have checked. Sometimes I think it is hard to formulate what the problem is when you have a parent who behaves differently towards you because of a spouse. It can be so incredibly subtle. Also, I had a fallout with my mother because of how her spouse was treating me and my then four-week-old baby. This was the culmination of several years of me feeling left out, avoided, and not appreciated and my mother being avoidant whenever I asked her about it. When I confronted him about how he greeted me and my baby, he eventually said, I don't like you and I never will. I told my mother I would never expose my kids to such a behavior and they almost broke up. Things are better now, but I felt like I was going insane all those years because I was told it was my imagination and that nothing was wrong. And how do you describe when something feels off but really nothing more concrete? I'm glad dad understood how Paula treats his daughter and they were able to move on. Paula's a dick. No question. But honestly, I think OP's dad has a long way to go to make up for his actions. He's definitely worse. Even if Paula wasn't interested, he should have been as both a father and grandfather. Pregnancy, birth, and children may not be rare. But it's hard. And you at least expect your parents to be there. Considering past actions of OP's dad, I'm not surprised. But I think OP's decision to mirror his behavior is the best way to get through to a flip-flop parent. And for those like Paula and OP's dad about the pregnancy and baby not being a big deal, common. Get a clue. You show support because it's important to other people and it's a big change. Just because it's not your thing doesn't mean you get to dismiss it as unimportant. 
How do you have good relationships with other people if you dismiss things in their life that are important to them and only interact when it interests you? It makes that relationship so transactional and self-serving rather than a true bond. I'm still getting DMs about how, not everyone cares about my pregnancy, and such. Such a weird thing to comment. Not everyone should care about the pregnancy but if I'm pregnant, I expect my loved ones, especially my parents, to care though. I live for the tea but damn even I'm tired just by reading all this drama. I hope her relationship with her father improves. For me it would have been too little, too late. I don't live in US so the main thing I got from the story is that 15 people visited Op while she was in hospital. It sounded super exhausting for me. My dad is the kind of guy who doesn't show emotions, missteps and says the wrong thing. Will flat out say he doesn't care when you are talking about something that doesn't interest him. Etc. But you can bet he showed interest in both of my pregnancies. Not day-to-day -day details but he cared and showed interest in finding out the sex. Finding out the names. Asking how I was feeling. Etc. He even came to the baby shower and was good sport. It's not that hard. What is it with younger partners alienating their partner's kids? Don't got for people with families if you don't want the baggage. I dated someone with a kid. And while his ex hated me. I didn't want him forgetting about his son. I think Paula's issue is that she's generally jealous of other women and wants to steal attention. Pregnant women and new mothers get a certain kind of attention that I imagine Paula covets. I find it telling that everything she gets excited about involves her image in some way social. Media posts. Holding the baby. And consequently the attention. In groups special access to the baby via photos etc pregnancy and postpartum may be the most challenging period of a woman's life and actually full of criticism and judgments but paula doesn't care about all that she wants some exalted status she believes comes with a baby i guess the silver lining is that paula at least recognizes that the task of raising children isn't as appealing to her as the social currency surrounding it OOP's dad lacks agency to think and act for himself. Him going for young women. Even if they're adults reflects dude's immaturity. And got annoyed that an actual infant wasn't as excited about it as she was. This line cracks me up every time I read it. I love her custom clue game. It sounds awesome. What's up with Paula? I'm glad Paula is out of the picture. She sounds incredibly toxic. With that said, can we talk about the custom clue-like game? That idea sounded amazing and I'm super glad that Oop went into detail about how they did it. Because now I'm inspired to copy the idea for a gift. Sure, it might not sound like much. Practically a reskin of the original. But the idea itself wouldn't have come to me on its own and it sounds like they had lots of fun. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Heracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.